you are welcome to yet another episode of HN What's Your Say? The number one listening show where we discuss real issues with real people like you. We are still featuring R. Kelly. Real name Robert Sylvester Kelly. Also known as the R&B King. The Chicago federal judge Harry Lyon and Weber on Thursday successfully killed the hopes of the government prosecutors who sought an indirect life sentence for the R&B King. The government prosecutors who in the previous press conference outside Dirksen Courthouse had stated that R. Kelly's guilty verdicts could attract a total of 90 years in prison, and were seeking that this sentence be served consecutively with the New York 30 years issued a while back by Judge Ann Donnelly were greatly disappointed to learn that this would not be the case, and that the Chicago sentence actually does give R. Kelly a higher possibility of returning to freedom after a few more years of incarceration. According to Judge Lyon and Weber, while the government prosecutors are so filled with malicious intent against the R&B King, he cannot be issuing a consecutive sentence to R. Kelly at his age, which would in a way prove to be an indirect life sentence. And indeed R. Kelly has not killed anybody to deserve to die in prison. It would not just be legally inappropriate but also a legal mistake to do such a thing to R. Kelly. Lyon and Weber did everything right and for the right reasons siding with R. Kelly all through, but only failed on determining the sentence duration. 20 years was rather too high considering R. Kelly was not found to have coerced minors like the judgment suggests, and that even the evidence that was presented in attempt to prove the CP charges was not confirmatory that Robert engaged in any such acts of duplication and distribution of the alleged video content. Remember the source of the video evidence presented in court until now has not even been identified. While anti-Kelly journalist Jim Diragatis claims he received it from an anonymous sender who dropped it in his mailbox incognito, this does not in any way identify the source of the video, and therefore its authenticity cannot be determined. By law, if video evidence is to be admissible in court, the entire chain of custody for the recording has to be known. The fact that the tape story is truncated at the mailbox level with no real information to tell us who did deliver the tape to Jim DeRogatis, the chain of custody is cut short and this therefore makes the tape evidence inadmissible. The fact that the Chicago court ignored this safeguard and instead continued to use the tape evidence as a basis for their judgment was a legal mistake and never should have happened. This among other factors can serve as a good basis for a Chicago appeal seeking to reduce R. Kelly's jail time. Another important thing to note is that during the sentencing hearing, Judge Lyon and Weber acknowledged that much as R. Kelly was determined guilty for enticing and coercing minors, he wasn't found guilty for coercion. This was a sort of confession that he indeed made a mistake when he ignored the indictment and proceeded to issue guilty verdicts on the three counts. If R. Kelly can appeal the enticing and coercing charges basing on the fact that it was not in line with what the indictment said, and also appeal the CP charges for an incomplete chain of custody for the evidence provided, R. Kelly could end up with no real charges against him, and this could easily make him a free man as per the Chicago case. What attorney Jennifer Bonjean is left to do therefore is appeal for either reduced sentences, or complete acquittal on both the Chicago and New York cases and R. Kelly's hope for freedom will be reinstated. It's still rather disturbing the way the government has been so invested in chasing after R. Kelly and asking for way too much in terms of sentencing, with the ultimate goal of locking him up for the rest of his life in prison. In Jennifer Bonjean's address to the press Thursday, she couldn't help but express utter disgust with this endless pursuit of her client by the government who have continued to overcharge and seek an indirect life sentences on him. According to Bonjean, child exploitation is not going to go away just because they managed to secure two or three life sentences on R. Kelly, and she calls it a very cheap way of addressing this matter, and if they really care to combat this, now is the time to leave R. Kelly alone and look at other people rather than continue to sustain an unhealthy fixation on the R&B King. We are grateful that Judge Weber managed to get several things right, even though he failed on determining how many years to issue R. Kelly. He surely did make some important and informative statements which if the government is able to interpret, they would have a second opinion on whether they should continue to pursue R. Kelly in Minnesota, or whether to drop the charges there too and leave the R&B King alone. Much as the Chicago state charges were dropped during an announcement by Kim Fox, R. Kelly still remains answerable to some charges in Minnesota, a matter about which we intend to keep you duly updated. According to DS. 
Now I understand why they made sure to deny R. Kelly bail amidst false excuses that he was a flight risk he could never be. They had the sinister plan to violate all his rights and freedoms, and they needed him in prison in order to achieve this. The fact that the original purpose of the bail denial was to get a hold of his phone records, in order to use them to convince the witnesses to testify against him makes the bail denial illegal and regrettable. This matter of bail denial deserves to be reviewed to better understand what motivated it. According to Chandra Cruz, the concurrent Chicago sentence was a win for sure. I am glad the judge saw through the lies these women were telling. He made sure not to give restitutions to Rashonda Landfair who was the star government witness, stating that R. Kelly indeed has no money to pay. He also made sure to mention that R. Kelly is not the pedophile they think he is and this is on record now. With this, I am confident that Jennifer Bonjean is going to win the appeals, and there is going to be some people going to jail. According to Next Level, the 19 years issued are concurrent and the one year consecutive is already served. So no serious damage to the R&B king. We are going to surmount. R. Kelly will be free sooner than we can imagine. If you wish to take part in a live interview on this channel discussing any of these topics, let us know by emailing us on sashahnnewsroom at gmail.com for scheduling. That is all we had for you today on HN What's Your Say? To keep updated whenever we post a new video, subscribe to this channel now. Also remember to hit the bell icon and enable notifications. And feel free to share your opinions with us in the comment section below, and let us know if you would like us to publish your views in our next release. We value all our subscribers' opinions.